Hello and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters, two-time winner of the Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best Arts and Culture Show. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Ninow. We welcome you, our viewer, to our new season of 2019 shows where we feature local artists and craftspeople here in Southern Oregon. And we talk to our featured artists about how they came to their art, what drives them as artists, find out stories behind their art, their art process, and how their work as artists influences their lives. Today, we enjoy the privilege of featuring local watercolor artist, Margaret Sturmer Cox. I discovered Margaret online on Facebook, and I found her style of watercolor imagery very appealing to me, and was happy to extend an invitation to Margaret to come on to the show. And so today, I'm pleased to talk to Margaret about her life as an artist and the work that she pursues, pursues today with her art. And so we welcome Margaret to the show. So Thank you. Welcome. Thank so you. now, Margaret, you also uh, go by the name of Peggy as well. Yes. So do you want me to address you as Margaret or Peggy throughout the rest of the show? Peggy's fine. Okay, Peggy's great. good. All right. So, Peggy, what's, um, uh, how long have you been pursuing your art and what brought you to doing the art that you're doing? I'm one of those that started early in life. My earliest memories are drawing. But I took a hiatus after college and um, joined the Army. And when I retired from the Army in, at the end of 2001 and beginning of 2002, I decided to pursue my dream, which was to become an artist. Right. And I became a watercolor artist mainly because the only class available was a watercolor class. And I thought, well, I've never done watercolor. Yeah. Sure, let's go for it. I didn't know it's supposed to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that was 2002, and, yeah. and I think I really enjoy the medium, and we, we, the medium, the paper, and I have a nice conversation. Yeah, you, you, you kind of found each other. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, now, I've done, I've, in my art life, I've dealt with watercolor a bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, watercolor and I never seem to like really mesh all too well, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, but you seem to have certainly found uh, it working well for you. Uh, and I know that in watercolor there are a variety of watercolor paints and there are a variety mm -hmm. of paper surfaces and types to select among. So uh, how much experimenting have you done in developing the style of work that you're doing now? Quite a bit. Yeah. I so I started in 2002, so that's 17 years of playing with watercolor. Yeah. And and it is really important to learn the characteristics of the paints. Right. Uh, some are more opaque, and some watercolor has a nice feature of granulating, and some are more transparent or staining. Yes. Uh, with the way I apply my watercolor, I apply in lots of thin, watery layers. I go with the trans more transparent and staining colors. The, the opaque and the granulating colors will turn to mud after yeah. about 20, 20 layers. And I also require a paper with a tooth. So I go with cold press instead of a hot press or rough press. And you play with the papers and you play. You're, you never really give up on <laughs> experimenting. Yeah. But I, I really like the cold press and a transparent transparent um, medium. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, you know, you certainly have developed a very unique style to your imagery. Um, so how did that kind of come about and what's your inspiration for the ideas that you put down on paper to create the images that you do? Well, I grew up in a house I'm going to go backwards a little bit. Yeah, I sure. grew up in a house of an a artist. My dad was a, a painter classically trained painter, but he was, I would say, a modern uh, realist or whatever. But um, I grew up around all sorts of books on art. So Picasso yeah. and, and the moderns, Brock, Cezanne, Matisse, mm -hmm. all the moderns were yeah. part of my childhood. So when I started painting, I was more interested in being expressive because that's what I liked, and I yeah. liked the bright colors. Then, th by flipping through catalogs and seeing what other artists are doing, I found that I liked the layering. Um, I, I layer a, a lot of different colors. And it's just kind of little things that you pick up here and there. I saw in a book, somebody mentioned a uh, watercolor is like linoleum block printing. You have a, uh, you print a, a color, and then you have an underlap and an overlap. And I thought, oh, 
that's perfect. I can do that with a wash. And mm. I, I, I can see how that works. Yeah. But so to make the long story short, he, little bits from my childhood and little bits from everybody and then a lot of experimenting. Yeah. Well, but that's, I think, kind of like a, a common, normal approach for most artist mm -hmm. development, yes. right? I mean, yes. you, you always are uh, trying out a variety of different things to kind of find uh, the niche that kind of suits you and, and satisfies you in terms of the ideas that you're trying mm -hmm. to express, right? Yes. So uh, that is very much, by its nature, a very experimental process. Yes, yes, and, indeed. Uh, and... You know, and I look at like the the image behind you, particularly. Uh, that's kind of like, uh, you know, it, it it. I look at that and I see, you know, a bit of Picasso uh, in his uh, in in that kind of a, a design, and 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 it kind of comes across in a mm -hmm. lot of your work. I mean, you see that modern uh, uh, kind of sensibility yeah. uh, from those kinds of artists. Well, um, Picasso or this painting here is a good example. Yeah. I w you always grow up hearing about cubism, but I, yes. I felt that I could not really understand what it was about until I could incorporate some of, some of the lessons, learn some of the lessons of cubism. So I experimented. I should say that a drawing is really the core of yeah. all these paintings. So I drew and drew and drew, and sometimes the drawings didn't come out very good yeah, right. until I finally f uh, figured out a way um, some drawings that I like to and fit some of the ideas of cubism into my paintings. Yes, and uh, you know, I'll, I'm not like uh, an expert on Picasso, but I know that he had certain periods in his life where he like got onto a certain theme, yes. like a certain color theme. Like he's famous for mm -hmm. his blue theme series for a while, and and. Is that kind of something that also kind of comes into your life? I mean, is, do you get like on a certain idea, uh, an inspirational idea, and like really kind of explore it to the max with mm -hmm. multiple, uh, with multiple paintings? Oh, absolutely. Uh, for me, that's the way I learn, and um, doing multiples uh, variations on a theme. Uh, all these paintings come from uh, are one in a series of different. So the the girls in the bar or a right. coffee bar, there's a several where I explore that theme, the cafe, mm -hmm. coffee, um, the still life with toy pony, I have 19 uh, variations of that oh, one, wow. and about 80 drawings, and the same with my lady here, yeah. I can't hear you, but it, it's through theme and variation that I've learned about color and being expressive, and each painting gives me ideas for the next one, each, right. and each drawing, so yes. Now, when you you get an idea for the creation of, of an image, and you're so the first thing that you're doing is you're working it out in a drawing form. Yes. All right. And uh, you know, and so when you're working out your drawing, are you doing more kind of like a a rough sketch kind of a rendering, or are you or are you getting into like a detailed kind of a rendering to kind of lay out in your mind how the colors are then going to lay down? over the drawing? I mean, because some artists yeah. take one approach versus another. Um, I do fairly, fairly in-depth yeah. uh, drawing. I go over and over the lines, I restate the lines. I do add tone. I'd say five by seven, but I can wear out the paper of a five by seven. Yeah. <laughs> uh, working the tone and lifting, you know, either gray or uh, the graphite, the pencil, going to white or to black. and trying different ideas until the, the drawing speaks to me. And then I trace the drawing and enlarge it to being uh, to a the painting. Side, right. Yes. Okay. And it never looks exactly the same, but I st have a good starting point and yes. idea that I've developed. But right. I, I need to take the tone, because once you add tone, you get a feeling of depth or whether or not the design will work. Mm -hmm. And generally, how much time are you investing in that? in that drawing process before you actually begin to deal with color? Sometimes it seems like it takes weeks. Well, okay, I'll t we're sitting watching TV and I have my five by seven notebook. So I'll start a design and so I'll work on it an hour, not very hard or depending how, if I get really into yeah. it and then I'll leave it there and I might do another drawing. I may have three drawings going at once and right. then I'll come back. So I'll told maybe four to eight hours 
on a drawing yeah, until okay. I like it. Right. And then, you, so then what you, that base drawing then gets transferred to a larger, enlarged kind of version. And then, then uh, once you've got to that point, uh, are you, is that like when you're considering the color scheme that you're bringing to bear on the image? Or have you kind of already thought that out as you were doing the drawing process? Some t on some occasions, I do think of the color right away. But as I'm drawing, I'm thinking about it. I'm trying to decide what, what mood I want to convey. What, what do I want to tell someone? So if I make a painting predominantly blue, what is it going to, yeah. what is it going to be? And so, um, and then sometimes I got this really good drawing and I haven't got a clue which way I'm going to go. <laughs> well, what color have I not used in a while? Let's yeah. see what kind of mood I can create using this design and purple and yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, uh, if you get started in laying down your colors mm. uh, and you begin to, like, find that, I'm not liking the way this is, like, going in this direction. Mm. I mean, do you then, like, you know, totally reverse a new area and start, you know, relayering new colors on? Or do you like kind of start all over again with the same basic drawing and, you know, uh, you know, cause so. <laughs> it's more, I don't usually read, well, I have redone some things in a totally different color, but yeah. um, usually I work with it, what I've gone, what I have. Yeah. Now that's, you put up a very good point. I will change my mind early on about what area is going to be dark yeah. and there is a fair amount of latitude there i i as i said i use transparency and staining colors so that i can adjust my color scheme a bit right, and okay. the layering and if it's it's too warm or or i want it to be black then but after you get about into the midpoint you're, you're stuck. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you better yeah. like it and yeah, make it work. Yeah, <laughs> because like I say, I, I, I've done a little bit of watercolor work yeah. in the past, but I'm certainly no expert on it. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a variety of, of paint types, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I imagine that, that selection of the paint and the combination with the right paper is going to affect your ability to say, I'm going to change this now. Yeah. And, and, you know, and there's got to be like a... A cutoff point. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, now, where's like, where do you find your normal, what's your, what's your normal source of inspiration that gets you the ideas that get you started on, uh, on, you know, saying, I'm going to, I've got this idea now, I'm going to start doing the drawing and working out a piece. I mean, are you finding, is there a common source for your inspiration or is it kind of just from wherever? Both. Uh, in between, I guess I do a lot of still lives and I, like coffee cups and things that interest me or actually the, the subject inspiration comes from all over the place. Um, I saw my sister on the telephone and she had an interesting pose and I thought, ah, oh, that's everybody. And I took a really bad photo. That's where yeah. that came from. Okay. That's everybody. And yeah. I said, oh, I have to have that. And yeah. um, the still life with toy pony was just some things around the house. Yeah. I said I want to I want to do a series, and I want it to be a still life, and I want one thing to be kind of not like the other things. Mm -hmm. So I got a, an espresso cup, a candle, and a vase. It yeah. didn't matter what. I just like their shapes, yeah, right. and they're kind of over here. And the toy pony doesn't match. Yeah. So that'll give me something interesting to work with. Right. I, I guess I come a little bit from the background, just pick something and, and find something interesting to say about it. Yes. But I tend to, right now, tend to be working on coffee cups because they're hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the people will inspire me and then I'll be back working with people. Yeah, right. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, what you do is, um, uh, you know, a remarkable uh, thing to see around here. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've... I see a lot of artists, uh, and I've had some other watercolor artists on my show, but uh, you're the first artist I've come across here in the Valley that's kind of doing the modern and Cubist kind of, of stuff. So that's neat to see. Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, now I know we've we got some, uh, a few images of your work. 
okay. so we can the control room can uh, bring up the images. We'll start kind of do a slideshow discussion. All right. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Um, the still this cafe is this, is the same as this cafe over here. Yeah. And what happened? This was for a commission, and this is a breakthrough. One of my big breakthrough paintings because I had to do 11 or 12 drawings before the, the person who was commissioning started, we started to sink and I was starting to find what she was looking for. Yeah. And um, it, this kind of process of doing a lot of drawings until you start to, to get an idea come together mm -hmm. has been really good for me. And I, I particularly like the cafe. It was a successful commission. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on to the next. This is one of my still life with toy ponies. And um, this was a good one for me in that it, w it was accepted into one of the big shows. And I just really, now this one is not quite so flat as that version. Uh, and it shows you a little bit of a different color scheme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next. This is a, a variation of my still life with with um, Toy Pony, and yeah. I just wanted to show what you can do with one yeah. idea. Right, yeah, okay. Let's go on to the next. This is another variation of my woman, I Can't Hear You. Yeah. A, a little bit more cubist and simplistic. Yeah, okay, let's go on to the next. And my sister, I have se sisters who are my inspiration, but whenever she calls, her cat is talking, trying yeah. to get in the conversation, so <laughs> that's my interpretation yeah. of our conversation. Okay, all right. Let's go on to the next. And this is old school, new school, um, part of, inspired by young people in the cafes. And so the old school is reading, the mom reading a book and the daughter on her laptop. Uh-huh, okay. Let's go on to the next. This is another variation. I just love how we, how there's three other people in the conversation through the cell phones. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next. Um, this was, uh, the, the Rogue Gallery and Art Center does a Celtic celebration, and um, I was playing with the idea of Irish breakfast tea, and that teacup is inspired by one my dad used. Mm, okay, and let's go on to the next. I was doing a demonstration on how to do people in a very simplified form, and I had this gentleman on a bench, and I was trying to figure out what he was doing, and then the painter Kandinsky and all his circles. So he's contemplating Kandinsky. Okay, all right. This is a play. Let's go on to the next. Uh, more of my ladies and their cell phones, and, and I've added the little bubbles of texting. Uh -huh. Okay. This was uh, dedicated to all librarians who um, sit and <laughs> <laughs> wish we'd all read our, to our kids more. Yeah, okay. Um, this one is actually in a show right now in Portland. This is one of my latest series. It's a three-minute egg, and uh, this is number 12, I think. Yes. Okay. Uh, All right, let's go on to the next. And this is number 13, and that's in San Diego. Okay. And this is another one of Irish breakfast tea for... I, I like trying to put in the symbols of the Irish. Right, okay. And, uh, and yet another um, still life with a, a three-minute egg. All right, okay. And on to the next. Now, this is one of your father's paintings, right? Uh, yes, I wanted to show a little bit of um, my father's painting and, and one of my major sources of inspiration. So yeah. this is the kind of work I saw every day when I was growing right, up okay. in New Mexico. And this is one of my favorite um, expressive paintings my dad, my dad did. Okay. Yeah, so it seems like, um, uh, I mean, art seems to have been like a, a, a big part of your life from early on. Yes, it was. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that struck me as we're looking at s some of the images, uh, and I look at like your cafe uh, types of images, that one of the ideas that, that struck me is that how it makes me also think of like traditional Japanese woodblock types of mm -hmm. prints. Right, that are very uh, uh, just really simplistic, uh, uh, fine uh, line cut forms mm -hmm. uh, uh, representing an image. 
So a little bit of that it comes across to me in some of your work, and I think that's kind of cool to see as well. Oh, thank you. Is it, um, it is, I like that idea of the, the print block, and because yeah. the, the flat shapes are fun, yeah. intriguing yeah. to work with. Yeah, well, there's a lot to be, uh, to, to be seen in the world, even in the most simplistic versions. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, and uh, and so that's always I, I see it uh, uh, kind of a cool thing for artists to go and explore the world in its most simplistic forms, just as much as can be seen in its complex forms. Yes, indeed. You know, <laughs> so that's kind of a neat thing to uh, to see and explore. Now, uh, in general, what's like the general uh, price range for your art? Well, well, so. Uh, these paintings here, that size, about eight hundred dollars framed, mm -hmm. and I, I generally do it based on size. Well, okay. And these, this one's about six fifty frame, and same with this one. Right. And I do have studies. Um, un I do sell them unframed, but I do have studies that are, are about fifty dollars, and then I have um, my smaller sizes go for about one hundred and seventy-five unframed. Okay. And the work that you're selling, is it all original or do you have like also prints that you do? I generally do all original, but there are places that, where I could do prints on demand if yeah. somebody would like a print. Right. But generally I do originals. Right. Okay. And, um, and so outside of the original art that you're producing mm -hmm. and selling, uh, you don't have um, like any other kinds of like a... Well, like some artists also produce like, uh, you know, gift cards yeah. and that kind of thing. You're not doing anything like that right now yet? Um, no, I will do them on, someone can order some and, right. and on demand, but I don't have a, I, I have gotten out of having an inventory. Yeah. Okay, to, to, all right. So, all right. Yeah. And are you, um, if someone wants to commission you for, for, uh, for a piece, how do they go about getting hold of you? Um, they can contact me through my website. Right. Uh, sturmer coxcom and one of the pages, or, or email me, and I will give them our terms for commissioning. Right. I have done a couple, not very many. Yeah. It's a pretty intense. Yeah. And what's the general time from when you start an idea, do the drawing, get that down, and start doing the the color? You know, what's uh, are you dealing with? Days, weeks, I mean, you know, some artists do some stuff really quick and some take like forever, so. I, I'm more on the forever side. <laughs> but, okay. Um, because, because there are so many layers of paint, which is kind of hard to imagine, but so th the paint really must dry between. Yeah. And usually when, when I'm really chugging along, I will have multiple paintings going, so it, it speeds things up. But every once in a while I get one done in a week, but more like, a month to three oh, okay but from start from drawing to finish on a commission you look in at least six months All right okay now yeah. um and so if someone wants like a a commission and they have like a color th theme idea yes you know then they would you know then you could like work that out with with the client yes See, i'm like a blue and white kind of a guy yes. so i'd want like some really cool blue and white theme piece yes yeah, uh, yeah. and um colors Doing little color studies, that's really helpful in commissions right. or in general. But yeah. yes, that's that's what we would do. Okay. Well, Peggy, I very much appreciate your coming on to the show to talk about your work. I really uh, enjoy it a great deal, so I'm really happy to have you on the show. Well, thank you very much. It's yeah. been an honor and fun. Yeah. Great fun. <laughs> well, I try to make it fun and easy on all my guests. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So... Uh, we've reached the end of our show, Rogue Artisans and Crafters, and I want to thank you at home for joining us and learning about our featured artist, Margaret Sturmer Cox. We wish to thank Margaret, uh, aka Peggy, for uh, coming on to the show to discuss her life as an artist. And so I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Ninow, and we will see you next time, Road Valley. We wish to thank you for watching Rogue Artisans and Crafters watch this program on demand by visiting rvtv.sou.edu. You can also follow our show on Facebook by visiting and liking our official show page. Just search for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. You can follow me, David Glamour Dave Nino, online at my YouTube channel and on Facebook. 
If you like this show and wish to support me in my show productions at RVTV, you can visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash glamour day. You can watch this show on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. and Thursday evenings at 11.30 p.m. We want to thank our crew who have made it possible to put this program together. Producer and host David Glamour Dave Nino is winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best New Producer and for Best Arts and Culture Show for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. 